Good afternoon to everyone, and welcome to this third uh, seminar of the series of newly appointed faculty member seminars uh, that are meant to present to the whole academy and to the whole hospital the new professor joining uh, UNIMED. Um, and the seminar will also be filmed, so people that cannot be here and this time we have a lot of students because I had the lesson with them the first year, so that's one of the reasons. But for those who cannot be here, they could see the seminar, will be able to see the seminar on the website. Uh, I'm here today to introduce the lecture that will be given by Professor Efrem Civilini, who just joined this August uh, our uh, university as Associate Professor in Vascular Surgery. Uh, Professor Civilini is Chief of the Department of Vascular Surgery at the Humanitas Research Hospital. And let me spend a couple of words to present to you, uh, uh, Professor Civilini. He graduated in Medicine and Surgery at the University of Milan, and he was board certified in Vascular Surgery at the University of Siena in Italy. He took his internship and residency uh, at San Raffaele Scientific Institute, uh, under the guidance of uh, his mentor, Professor Roberto Chiesa. And he completed his formation in minimally invasive aortic surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. He has a huge experience, uh, and he is still quite young, uh, of more than 15,000 vascular interventions. I, I don't know if I'm up to date, but it's a huge number in any way, huge, huge number. And his research interests have focused on aortic surgery and minimally invasive vascular therapies. He co-authored practice guidelines in the treatment of patients with cardiovascular diseases and has played a role in industry-sponsored clinical trials assessing the performance of new expandable stents used to treat thor thoracic aorta disease. And he is author of more than 60 full papers in peer-reviewed journals. This time we have a large fraction of the audience that is composed by first-year medical students, so I am sure that this lecture will be inspiring to them for their future career, and maybe some of them will decide to become vascular surgeon. This is your responsibility today, Ephraim. And yeah, and so I'm really pleased to invite Professor Civilini to the stage to give his lecture that is entitled, as you can see, Me, Myself, and Vascular Surgery. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano, for your very nice uh, introduction. And uh, dear professor, colleagues, students, and friends, thank you for coming today. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Humanitas University for, for this unique opportunity that gave me to uh, present you today a story, a story of me and myself and my relationship with uh, vascular surgery. So uh, this story begins with uh, this uh, very famous quote. I think uh, all of you have uh, uh, seen it in the, in the past. And this quote is about the need of the human being to express himself in the, his expectation in life. And uh, I think I'm uh, very uh, lucky because uh, I know exactly when was my second, first, my second most important day in my life. It was in the middle of 1985. At that time, uh, I was uh, at the end of my middle school and uh, the day, you know, the uh, headmaster of my school asked the pupil about the, the plan of their future, about their studies. And uh, actually, at that time, I was not so brilliant at school. That means that my, my marks weren't so good. And uh, so when it was my turn, the, the headmaster told me, OK, Ephraim, you will be, I think, in your future, you'll do a manual labor. You'll be a very good uh, pizzaiolo. So this idea sounded very good to me, because you have to know that my father is the owner of a seafood restaurant in a city where I was born. And uh, the, idea, the idea of following the footstep of my father sounded really uh, great to me. However, you know, making pizza all day long, um, it sounded to me a little bit maybe uh, repetitive, uh, maybe a little bit boring. So, uh, this wasn't in line with my ambition. And so I decided to do something more in my life. So I decided to become a chef in the restaurant of my father. However, as you can see here, the early results uh, weren't so, so good. 
Uh, if we can, we can use uh, some medical term, as you can see, the, the results are satisfactory. I mean, the, the rice is cooked, however, uh, not successful, at least look at the, looking at the eyes of uh, this friend of mine. So I realized that uh, something was missing. So I started thinking uh, uh, about the, the, the ingredients uh, uh, are, were necessary to me to build up my personal recipe to build my future profession. And I think that um, the first ingredient is, uh, is passion. I shot this picture many years ago on a border of, uh, uh, between Mozambique and Angola, where I met this lady. She was a, a, a farmer that every day with the co-workers used to cross a very dangerous river full of crocodiles. Uh, as a, and they, uh, as clandestine, used to uh, harvest this poor handful of pepperoncini. And uh, I still remember how proudly she offered me and to my camera uh, the, the result of uh, her uh, daily labor. And uh, at that time, uh, I have only two pass passions, that is uh, wandering around the world, taking pictures, and, uh, and fishing. However, this uh, uh, passion uh, was very important to, to me. Uh, because the, the art of fishing taught me the, the art of being patient. You know, staying uh, a part of the river and just looking, uh, staring for hours at, uh, at the float and without, with uh, nothing uh, happening, but just focusing your, your target. Uh, and this uh, reminds me uh, um, a story. And uh, uh, in the last year, I used to attend some classes of, uh, I, I, I attended some classes of Kung Fu. And uh, one day, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a pupil of these classes, uh, went to the, the master, uh, asking him, uh, so master, I am really enjoy practicing Kung Fu, and uh, so, but I, I like to have this black belt, but how long does it take to achieve this, uh, uh, this black belt? And the master answered him, well, if you are good enough, if you practice a lot, it will, be, it will take you more or less 10 years. So the pupil uh, replied, but you know, I'm really in love with Kung Fu. I, wanna, I will practice this, it twice a day, every day in the week. Uh, so the master replied, uh, in such a case, it will take you 15 years. That's what I mean for having patience. So focus, focusing uh, on your target and uh, working hard every day. And indeed, the results will uh, will come, as you can see here, with, uh, with great satisfaction. So, so far we have uh, uh, three ingredients, ambition, passion, and patient. However, the art of, uh, of fishing taught me an, a, a lot of other things. Uh, for instance, the ability to build very uh, small and complex things like this, uh, for instance, uh, artificial fly. However, if you remember, I am also ambitious. So I started the from, uh, building from this very tiny uh, object. Uh, I started fixing, for instance, my, my bikes. Uh, at, I was a child at uh, that time. And then my personal motorbikes, then its engine. And this ended up with building my personal car. OK. It's not, as you can see here, it's not so luxurious. However, I'm proud of, uh, I'm proud of it, because it's, this is the result of three not working cars mixed together. And, um, and you, you can see here. But the, the theme here is uh, how can somebody learn to build uh, his own car? Well, I'm not a genius. I'm not a self-educated man. But maybe I'm a good student. So uh, they say that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. But who is the teacher here? I will say that everybody can uh, teach us something. That means that we can learn something from uh, anybody. However, I will start uh, from the person that cares about us. This is uh, my father. And these are the words that uh, Steve Jobs dedicated to, to, to his father. And I think that uh, these two guys have in common that they both uh, love doing things right. That means that uh, you can be sure that this is the, the, restaurant, the restaurant of my father you can be sure that uh, the apple that lies uh, at the bottom of this, this plate is uh, as fresh, as good uh, uh, as the, the one that is on the top. So thank you, Father. And uh, another point I'd like to discuss with you today is the art of being empathic with, uh, with others and to uh, 
develop our practice of guiding them. I am aware the kitchen is closed. Maybe a cold dish, whatever you can find. Mm, well, everything's delicious here. Take your pick. What do you have that's like? Uh, let's see. I have a steak. A big, heavy slab of meat swimming in fat, served with some greasy breaded liver and a side of kidney pie. Or maybe fish. Fish, fish. Very well. We have some nice, fatty halibut. Or some mackerel marinated in Grand Manier and stuffed with blood sausage. Or a uh, fresh salmon, or a... Uh... Oh, salmon would be good, thanks. With that comes a... Uh... And a side dish, too? Oh, let me tell you. There's uh, mushrooms very, very, very fried, or buttered potatoes braised and served with buttercream dipping sauce, or perhaps... Do you have a small light salad with a vinaigrette dressing? If not, nothing. A small salad for you? What a pity, because the very, very fried mushrooms were out of... Well, the art of guiding people is very important, especially if you, have, if you are a doctor. Uh, today, it's not infrequent that uh, if you go to the doctor as a patient, saying to him, uh, okay, I have, the, I have this disease, what can I do? And uh, the answer usually uh, is, uh, okay, for your disease today, we have two kinds of treatments. Treatment A with this pro and cons, and treatment B with this other pro and cons, which is your choice. So, in this scenario, uh, the, the, the actor that, is, that maybe knows everything about your disease doesn't take a decision. On the contrary, the, the patient that maybe is not, doesn't, doesn't know anything about his, uh, his disease uh, and maybe is not in the very, very good con mental condition to take a, a so important decision is obliged to, to take this, the, the right choice. And uh, so, as, as physician, we have to... Uh, uh, in, improve our ability to guide the patient to, for instance, uh, cho choose the, the treatment A, that, me, me, that uh, sometimes is the uh, bitter pill is, and is not the uh, maybe more fascinating treatment that maybe the, the patient has, so, has, has read about on the internet. So this is another quality very, very important to me. And um, another quality is uh, the uh, ability of use our senses. I still remember in, uh, in the past when uh, I used to go with my father to the fish market. And over there, I, I learned with him. He taught me how to inspect the patient, the, sorry, the, the, the fishes. <laughs> inspect the fishes, you know, the smell, the color of the, of the gills, the aspect of the eye, and these, uh, uh, a practice, recall me another practice that is uh, uh, examine the patient. So today, you know, we have a lot of uh, scan tests, a lot of uh, lab tests, uh, uh, that, and uh, indeed they are very helpful for us to, to make a very uh, exact diagnosis. However, uh, I think that uh, we, uh, examining the patient is still more important. So my message here is to uh, touch him, visiting him, examining him, uncover him, uh, uh, and uh, uh, this is very helpful for, uh, uh, in, in, our, in, in our treatment, in our, in our daily treatment. Uh, and it's a kind of ritual that uh, the patient will expect from, for, uh, from us. So the, the, the further point is that uh, if you, are, of course, plan to do a manual job, you have to improve and work on, on your manual dexterity. You do a little bit of fishing? Watch what I do right now. You take this knife and start it between the skin and the meat, and that poor fish will jump out of its skin. Look at this, look at this. Now watch, I can even take the meat right off the skin. I had to buy that knife. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> However, soon I realized that the difference is not made by, made by, the, by the knife, but is the, by, made by the the hand that handles the knife. So, and this guy is just a very good salesman. So how can we improve our dexterity? This is the answer. I think all of you, all of you knows about it. No question. Yeah, but I... Right. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. Practice, practice, practice over and over, every day. This is, uh, uh, of course, the, the answer to uh, improve our dexterity, if you, of course, if you plan to do a manual job. The last point I would like to uh, talk you to, with you today is the 
exploration of the world. Uh, this uh, uh, author, that is the uh, author of a very famous book, that is The Little Prince, uh, taught us in another book uh, how it's important to explore the, the, the earth uh, because the, the, uh, just exploring the earth, we, we learn a lot of things. And, uh, uh, and we, uh, we learn something when we uh, face an obstacle. However, to face and overcome the obstacle that we, uh, w that we meet when we explore the world, uh, is, uh, uh, we need a, a, a tool. For instance, the carpenter's plane or the plow for the farmer. And uh, uh, in my, in my, uh, the tool that I used in my exploration, of course, was my, my camera. However, I think that uh, uh, our journey should not be made only in the in the world to face obstacle, but uh, and, and, and uh, to face and to to meet the the solutions. But also we have to make the journey in our past and what we learned when we were a child. And uh, for instance, uh, just imagine cutting a sheet of paper or assembling uh, or disassembling uh, plastic bricks. And uh, of course, the engine of all of this exploration uh, is, the, is our curiosity. And I think that, uh, like a child, you have to, to find every day a new uh, adventure, new problems, and of course, new solution. And this is an, an, this is an, as a, this is an example. A uh, few years ago, uh, my chief asked me to, to draw a, a, sch a scheme of an orthodox section. And actually, it took me a uh, few second, seconds to take a sheet of paper and drawing, and drawing this uh, very simple scheme. But however, as you see here, is uh, adequate, adequate. We have the ascending aorta, the arch, the descending aorta, the true lumen, false lumen, tier of, of dissection. However, so it, it was adequate. I, however, I thought that what, something was missing. So that, that evening, I started working of an, on a new computer graphic software. And uh, you know, it took me a while. However, after one week, uh, this is my result. And I came back to my, went back to my chief and I presented, I presented him this new scheme. And he told me, OK, that's very nice. We can see the aortic ismus, left subclimbing artery. But where is the dissection? Uh, wait a little bit, because this is not uh, a still image, but it's a movie. As you can see here, the shear stress over the outer wall of the aorta is uh, represented. And uh, also we can uh, see the developing of the, the section, the tear formation, the enlargement of the, of the false lumen, the shrinkage of the true lumen under the pressure of the blood flow. We can even see the pathology from inside the tear. We can uh, see also how the Transesophageal echo shows us for of the dissection, the uh, blood flow in the true and false lumen. Here is a representation of the of the blood, and again the how transesophageal echo shows uh, about this kind of uh, of disease. So that's what I mean from for uh, curiosity that should be the engine of everything we do every day. So. At the end of my, this my very personal journey, I uh, went, back to, I went back to my father and uh, told me, I told him, OK, I am ambitious. I have patience. I have passion in everything I do. I learned a lot of things. I improved my empathy and my, all my senses, and also my manual ability. And the engine of all, all of this is my uh, curiosity. So father. I'm ready to become a chef in your, in your restaurant. However, uh, he replied, uh, no, Ephraim, you are not a chef. You are a surgeon. So I was astonished. And so he continued uh, uh, explaining me his point. Uh, just uh, think about the fishing knots. He told me, you are very familiar in making them. But just imagine that also surgical knots belongs to the same big family of, uh, of the knots. So, if you use your power of abstraction and your level of thinking, you can imagine that if you are familiar with this kind of, of notes, you are automatically familiar with this kind of, of notes. Basically, the skill is the same. So let's explore some example. Uh, this is a, a surgical thread in comparison with a human hair. 
and as you can see here, the, the, the thread, the, the suture is very tiny, it's very delicate. So in a, in a rigid system like here, it's very easy to, to break the suture when you pull it. However, if you use your ladder of thinking, that's me uh, many years ago fishing crocodiles in the Amazon basin. And uh, it's, okay, it's not so easy to see it, but this is the, a very tiny nylon line. That doesn't break. It doesn't break just because we, can, we use a fishing rod. And the tip of the fishing rod gives elasticity to the system. And this, this prevents the, uh, the fracture of the, of the line. And so using, using lateral thinking, uh, let's see some example. On the left, uh, you see the rigid system. The, the, the thread doesn't break. However, on the right, if you use your fingertip as a, a tip of the of a fishing rod, you can pull the suture as much as you want and it doesn't break. Another example, uh, using this kind of self-retractor can be very useful, useful either for the patient and, the, and for the surgeon. However, sometimes assembling it can be very, very tricky. And uh, so, lateral thinking just remind when you, how it was easily, easy to, to change a tire of my, you know, luxurious car. And uh, using that skill, uh, also assembling this kind of self-retractor can be very handy. So uh, here we come to vascular surgery at the end. And uh, you know, uh, the vascular diseases can be very simple in a certain view, and because we are, every day we, are, we, deals, we deal with uh, damaged pipes, and uh, they either dilate, forming, forming the so-called aneurysm, like this thoracodominal aneurysm. On the contrary, they can narrow, like this atherosclerotic occlusion of the right iliac axis. So what fascinated me, however, in uh, doing this kind of prof profession uh, is that we are, basically, we are called to, to treat the patient from the base of the skull to the tip of the toe, so wherever there are vessels. And uh, sometimes it's very, of course, complex to repair them. However, uh, if you uh, learn how to use your lateral thinking, sometimes it, bec it becomes much, much easier. Let me show you some uh, clinical example. This is a carotid bifurcation. Uh, this is the uh, carotid plaque at the level of the bifurcation. This is the internal carotid artery. Of course, uh, the uh, goal here in this surgery is to remove this plaque because uh, as you can imagine, the presence of this atheroma here may uh, cause, uh, may lead to a atheroembolic uh, uh, stroke of the patient. So we have to remove this, uh, this plaque. However, as you can see here, during the procedure, the internal carotid artery is occluded. So how can be we sure that the, uh, the cerebral circulation is adequate during this, uh, this procedure? My answer is uh, local anesthesia. This is what I, was, what I mastered in the, last, uh, in the last year. That means that uh, throughout all the procedure, the, the patient is awakened, and we can ask him a very simple question or ask him to open and close the contralateral uh, hand just to be sure that everything is, going, is doing well at, uh, at the level of the cerebral circulation. Uh, another, another topic uh, is the critical limb ischemia. That means that uh, 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 we can have a, 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 an interruption of the blood flow to the, to the leg, for instance, in, the, in, in this case, either in a chronic or acute setting. This is an acute ischemia of the, of the leg. Uh, what we are called to do is, is to overcome the obstruction. And uh, uh, we use a, a peripheral bypass surgery. And this is, we, here we are below the knee, here we are uh, at the groin. And the best conduit to be used to do this kind of surgery is the greater saphenous vein, that is this one. This is the harvesting of the vein. And this is the running, the inflow vessel, that is, that is the uh, femoral bifurcation. As you can see here, the plaque is removed. And uh, to achieve a very good uh, inflow, then the greater saphenous vein is attached to the femoral artery. This is the target vessel, a tibial artery. And this is the instrument that we use to, to cut the valves of the greater saphenous vein that is here. Uh, that means there are four very uh, small blades that cut the valves, uh, withdrawing the, the, this instrument, as you can see here. And then, as a last uh, step, the greater saphenous vein is attached to the vessel 
and you can see here the pulsatile flow into the runoff vessel. And this is the angel that shows the good patency of the bypass and good restoration of flow be, 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 uh, below the knee. Um, and this is the result. Actually, with this kind of, uh, of surgery, we can uh, change radically the natural history of this ischemic foot. And you see that day zero, uh, we, have, uh, we have a large ischemic ulcer of the foot. And after one and three months, we complete healing of the, of the ulcer. On the other, on the other uh, side, we have a dilatative uh, pathology. This is a, an abdominal, infrarenal abdominal aneurysm. This is the normal aorta. The, the, the head is on the left, the, the legs are on the right. And these are the two iliac artery. And uh, the standard treatment for this kind, for such a pathology is uh, uh, general anesthesia, uh, a very long cut of the belly, uh, a, a, a clamping of the aorta at the level of the two renal arteries that are, they are these two arteries, uh, you know, under these vessel loops, and then um, the substitution of the uh, damaged vessel with a dacron graft, with a synthetic graft, and then rehab the patient. Uh, however, what we, what I found here in Humanitas, and we are trying to improve, is a, a very a new protocol of uh, uh, for enhanced recovery after surgery of this patient. This is a traditional patient in his first postoperative day. He, as you see here, he is uh, still in bed with lots of tubes, monitors, and so on. And uh, however, thanks to a very, very good uh, uh, teamwork that includes, uh, of course, surgeons, anesthesiologists, uh, nurses, and all the medical staff, we, this is the result that we have here today in, uh, in Humanitas. This, is, uh, this lady is uh, in her first postoperative day after a large uh, aneurysm repair with the opening of the belly. And using this protocol, that means that uh, even uh, the same day, the same evening of the uh, intervention, the, the patient is taken out from the bed. Uh, we give uh, food to them, they, they eat. And, uh, and uh, so we mobilize very early the patient. And uh, as you can see here in the first postoperative day, this lady is outside the bed, outside the hospital to smoke her loved cigarette, and she's very, very happy. And this is the last chapter, uh, thoracobdominal aorta. Uh, I have a very good experience in doing this kind of surgery. Just to be clear, this, so this is the chest, this is the abdomen, this is the diaphragm muscle, and uh, this is, of course, is the huge aneurysm. And uh, this is just the infrarenal aneurysm, the one we saw in the previous uh, section. And uh, the, to uh, treat this, uh, this kind of uh, disease, uh, we have to make a very long cut uh, that includes the, the chest and the, the belly, the abdomen. This is the coastal margin that is uh, uh, cut, and this is the, the diaphragm that is uh, cut as well with a limited, limited and circumferential phrenotomy. That means that to, uh, this limited phrenotomy is meant to spare the, the, the central part of the, uh, of the diaphragm to prevent uh, uh, the, the uh, phrenic palsy in the perioperative uh, time. Uh, the major issue related to this uh, uh, to this uh, surgery is that uh, all the lower part of the, our body is uh, in, in ischemia during the proximal clamping of the aorta. So we take oxygenated blood flow from the left part, left part of the heart, and uh, this, this oxygenated blood flow is uh, reinfused to, uh, thanks to a pump uh, into the left femoral artery to maintain, to keep perfusion of, the, uh, of all the abdominal organs and uh, also to the spinal cord during the, the repair. This is the step of, uh, here we are very proximal, this is the left subclavian artery, this is the distal arch, and this is the clamp that is put uh, beyond the left subclavian artery. Then, the, of course, the repair uh, goes on, uh, and uh, 
of course, while we uh, substitute the damaged aorta, we have to recognize the uh, most vital uh, vessel that arises from the aorta. These are the costal, intercostal arteries. As in the, you can imagine the, how it's important to reattach them to the, uh, to the, to the tube graft, to the dacron graft. This is to, prefer, to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, the uh, postoperative paraplegia of the patient. The last part is to reattach, of course, the four most important visceral vessels. That, that means uh, the SMA, superior mesenteric artery, celiac trunk, we use, as you, see, you can see here, the blood that is taken from the pump, and uh, the two renal arteries that are uh, perfused with the cold solution. And then also this part of the aura is reattached to the graft, and this is the final result. So here is the, the head, the, the lung, this is the abdomen, and this, has the iliac, this is the iliac, bif iliac bif bifurcation, proximal and, di and distal anastomosis, reattachment of the visceral vessel and uh, the intercostal arteries. So my goals and uh, I would say ambition here is uh, to start a, a, a program to start this kind of surgery. So I'd like to, to, team, uh, to, to build a team dedicated to this kind of, uh, of surgery. And uh, who knows, in, uh, my ambition, of course, in the future to become a referral center for this kind of a disease uh, and including also the Marfan patients. Uh, all the um, diseases that I show, the vascular diseases that I show you uh, before uh, can be also today treated with a, another kind of approach, very uh, attractive, fascinating, that is endovascular approach. That means that we can uh, treat basically anything also without opening the, the cavities of our body. And we can in, introduce this, ento, uh, this ten graft to heal the, for instance, uh, the henrism, like uh, in this case. And you know, this is very attractive. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we can treat today abdominal aorta, infrarenal aorta, uh, aortic arch, and thoracic abdominal aneurysm. So this is very fascinating, maybe, uh, this, is, this will be the future of vascular surgery. I don't know. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I'm, I'm working on both the, the treatment. I, I uh, use both of these uh, treatment for uh, vascular, uh, per vascular patients. I don't know if this will be the future and the open surgeon will be in the future without, with no work anymore. Uh, but however, you know, in the meanwhile, I'm, I have a plan B to work on, uh, and uh, let me thank uh, you for coming. Let me thank my, my very uh, precious team that uh, uh, received me very, in a very lovely way a few months ago, and of course, my family, and thank you.